Hello, it's Kathy Cassidy and I'm going to read you another chapter of Love from Lexi. I'm outside again so please bear with me if there's strange things like barking dogs or people walking past. Um, I'm going to start as usual with the little filler between the chapters and this time it's another letter, a letter from Lexi to her mum but this time the letter's been scrunched up. It says, Dear Mum, things are moving very slowly with the cool boy. I can't tell if he likes me or not. I've tried making the first move myself, but I'm not very good at it and it makes me feel shy. I don't think he's shy though. I don't, and it, it just feels so confusing. I feel awful, like our one and only kiss put him off for life. Maybe I should change my toothpaste or start wearing strawberry lip gloss or chew gum or something. I just can't work him out at all and sometimes I think maybe I don't want to. So things aren't looking too hopeful right now. The Lost and Found did that song I wrote for you on TV and I talked to the camera close up but I don't suppose you saw. The nightmares are back and I really don't want to remember those things. It wasn't always like that. We were happy sometimes, weren't we? Love from Lexi. P.S. I'm going to fold this letter into the shape of a paper boat and push it out onto the lake. If you're walking past, maybe it will catch your eye. So, I think dogs along the street are having a bark, but this is chapter 23 and it's called Library Love. The next day at school, as predicted, everyone is talking about the lost and found and our brief appearance on TV. As if by magic, posters have appeared around the school, A5 flyers featuring a photo taken during the library filming. There are only half of us in the picture, of course, but we look confident, cool, slightly mysterious. The lost and found, the poster announces. See them live with pop superstar Ked Wilder at the library's festival in Milford Park on Saturday the 10th of June. This will be Jake's doing, Happy says. He took a ton of pictures on his phone when we were filming. I reckon he's planned this, got the posters ready and put them on, up on the day after the film went live. He's good, I agree. Not sure if we need a tech guy just yet and it's hard to manage a band with someone like Marley in it because he is totally a law unto himself. But Jake is great at publicity and making things happen. He found us the old railway carriage, he put us together with Louisa Winter and he's amazing with posters and flyers and stuff. I'm calling a library campaign meeting for six o'clock tomorrow at the railway carriage, Bex says. We need Jake for that, he's full of good ideas. I'll tell the others at band practice later. A swarm of year sevens come shoving their way along the corridor, falling into goggle-eyed silence as they catch sight of us. It's slightly surreal. Hey, happy whispers as the sea of year sevens parts politely to let us pass. What is this? I don't like it. Get used to it, girl, Vex says. This is fame and it's happening. It's real. One TV show and a few posters and just look at those kids. They're staring at us like we come from another planet. They always stare at you that way, I point out truthfully, and she elbows me in the ribs. Everybody turns up to Thursday's Save the Libraries meeting except, predictably, Marley and Dylan. What is it with Marley Hayes, Bex wants to know. He expects us to jump through hoops for his band. I swear my fingers are practically raw after last night's practice, but he can't show up for this, even though it's the very thing that has given us our first festival slot. Idiot. I don't correct her, but I'm sad. Marley said he'd be here and Bex is right, the festival is a big deal for the band. The least he could do is be here and find out what, what's being planned. As Happy hands round juice and cookies, the others settle onto the ancient sofas and Bex consults her notebook. Okay, Jake, what's the latest on the festival? Jake takes over reminding everyone of the festival date and explaining that Louisa Winter and the adult campaigners are sorting this particular part of the protest. Miss Winter is friends with the family who run Glastonbury, I think, he explains. She'll have all the right contacts and make sure it's cool, even if it's only on a smaller scale. The council gave permission for a half-day festival event before the newspaper announced it was going to be all about libraries, and now they can't go back on it. 
irony much? Anyway, we'll have a stage in the park, some chill out tents and local food and trade stores. Ked Wilder's playing at half two, so the only bit we need to worry about is being ready for our half hour slot, slot beforehand. Half an hour, George echoes, no way. How many songs do we need to fill that? Six or seven, Marley reckons, Jake says. Five minimum, with a bit of patter in between to spin things out maybe. At the moment, we've got three songs, but Marley and Lexi are working on it. It's gotta be doable, right? There is some debate about this, but everybody is willing to do their best. And after a while, Bex pulls us back to the point again, updating us on the letters campaign, the petition, the push to get primary school kids to sign up for a library card. Finally, Louisa Winter is going to do a piece in the Gazette this weekend, possibly with Lexi here too, because the paper loves that whole angle of teens taking action. And the letters idea was hers originally, as you all know. Let's get a buzz going. Let the council know just how many people care. Bex thanks everyone for coming along to the meeting and things relax a bit with people asking questions or forming little groups to plan what they'll be doing. One by one, people start to leave and I put the kettle on for warm water to wash up while I collect stray mugs to rinse at the sink. When I go back to the sink, the window is all steamed up. I reach out a finger and trace something quickly before the steam clears. When Sammy moves towards me, I step aside automatically to let him pass, but instead he touches my arm. Letter, he says, pushing a fold of paper into my hands. I unfold the paper and there is a perfect library love letter, a heartfelt note telling the council what Bridge Street Library means to him as a young refugee struggling to settle down in Milford, thousands of miles from home. I'm amazed that he's been able to write so clearly and with such feeling. It is good, he asks quietly, the letter. It will help your fight, Lexi. My eyes widen because I don't think I've heard him say more than a couple of words before. I assumed his English was poor, that he didn't understand much of what was being said around him. But it looks like his silence is from choice, not necessity. It's perfect, I tell him, and his face breaks into a grin that somehow lifts my spirits too. Thank you, Sammy. Can I photocopy it? Show it to the newspaper? Of course, he says. I am happy to help. I am happy to make you smile. And he walks away, a tall, skinny boy with hair like a bird's nest, in a coat that's really as dodgy as Marley said, grubby and worn and frayed at the seams and way too warm for a sunny May evening. I'm still smiling. And uh, just to finish that off, I'm going to show you the filler between this and the next chapter because it's what Lexi wrote in the steamed up glass of the window. Okay. Yeah, just about. It says, Mum, please help. I don't know what to do. Love, Lexi. So that's the end of today's chapter and I will be back tomorrow all being well with another chapter for you and we're getting towards the end so things are definitely about to hot up. Um, please keep yourselves safe, keep yourselves well and keep smiling if you can. Remember if you're, if you're stuck for something to do go check out my Dream Catcher blog which has lots and lots of ideas for how to get through the lockdown. Take care and see you soon.